In this video, we're going to look at how to compute volumes of solids of revolution using the disk method. Suppose we have a solid that lies along the x-axis between the values of x equal a and x equal b. If we know the cross-sectional area for every x value between a and b, and we can call that cross-sectional area uh, the function a of x, then we can easily compute the volume of our solid by looking at the definite integral from a to b of our cross-sectional area function a of x dx. This integral formula can be applied to any solid um, as long as the values of a, b, and the cross-sectional area function a of x can be determined. But in this video, we're going to specifically look at solids of revolution whose cross-sections are disks. When we use the phrase solid of revolution, we're referring to a solid that's obtained in a very specific way. In particular, we're looking at a solid that we obtain by rotating one or more curves in the plane around a fixed line. This fixed line is often called the axis of rotation. And for purposes of this video, we're going to focus on examples where the axis of rotation is either horizontal or vertical. To describe a solid of revolution, we start by describing a region in the plane bounded by one or more curves. For example, here we see a region that is bounded by four different curves. We have the vertical line x equal 1 on the left side. We have the x-axis along the bottom. We have the vertical line x equal 4 on the right side. And on the top, we have y equal square root of x. And so this region here is bounded by these four curves. And we're going to create a solid of revolution by rotating this region around the x-axis, which will be our axis of rotation. And I'll indicate that by drawing a circular arrow around the x-axis. When we rotate this region around the x-axis, we obtain the three-dimensional solid shown here. Notice that the bottom half of this solid is just a mirror image of the top half and is bounded by the reflections of the curves used to describe the original region. To apply the volume formula that we just described, we need to know three things. We need to know the values on the x-axis um, that this solid lies between, and that's pretty easy to determine here. The solid is going to lie between x equal 1 and x equal 4. And we also need to know the cross-sectional area at every value of x between those endpoints. And so here, if we pick a value of x on the x-axis, I'll represent that by this red dot, and I take a cross-section of this solid at that point on the x-axis, then what we're going to get is a disk. And so we'll have some sort of a cir uh, the circular disk here. Um, that will be our cross-section. And we need to find the area of this disk. Um, in order to find the area of a disk, we need to know the radius of the disk uh, because the area will be pi times the radius squared. And we can determine the radius of the disk by going back to our region and looking at how that particular cross-sectional disk was formed. In this particular case, we have the same, we'll pick the same x value here. And we notice that this disk is formed by taking the segment from the x-axis up to the curve square root of x and then spinning that curve around, um, just that one segment around, to form our disk. Um, and so this will be our cross-section that we had in our solid. And so the radius here is easily determined. Um, the radius of this disk is simply going to be the square root of whatever the x value on the x-axis happens to be. And so once we know this, we can find the area of the disk and therefore um, have the volume for, found by computing the integral formula that we've previously discussed. Before we compute the volume of the solid that we just discussed, let's look at the details behind the disk method. To apply the disk method, we need to have a region that is bounded between some curve, y equal f of x, and the axis of rotation. In the example we just discussed, we saw that the region was bounded between y equal the square root of x and the x-axis, which is the axis of rotation. When we have a region that's bounded in this way, 
the cross sections will always end up being disks and the cross sectional area a of x will always be pi times the radius of uh, radius squared of that particular disk at that value of x once we know that once we're able to compute find that radius of the disk we can see that the volume of our solid is going to be given by the definite integral from a to b of pi times the radius squared, since pi times the radius squared is our cross-sectional area of our solid. In this example, we want to find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region between y equal the square root of x, x equal 1, x equal 4, and y equals 0 around the x-axis. Notice this is exactly the same region and solid that we looked at previously, just described in words as opposed to just being given the graph. Our region in the plane borders the axis of rotation, which is the x-axis here. And so we know that our cross sections will be disks and we'll be able to use the disk method to compute this volume. So we know our volume will be given by the formula of the integral from a to b of pi times uh, r of x squared, where r of x is the radius at x. And we just simply need to find the values of a, b, and r. Well, here uh, we know a and b are give, basically given to us. Um, they're the boundaries on the x-axis for our solid. And here our solid is lying between x equal 1 and x equals 4. So we know we're going to have the integral 1 to 4 um, of pi times our radius squared. And the radius of whatever disk we pick, if I pick an x value here, we know our cross section will be a disk like this. And our radius uh, we can think of as the segment from the x-axis up to our curve. Uh, this will be the segment rotated around will give us the entire disk. And so the length of that segment, which is the radius, will simply be the square root of x here. It's the distance between the x-axis and the curve y equal square root of x, which of course will just be square root of x given whatever x value we have. And so here, uh, we want to replace r of x with the square root of x. And so we have the integral from 1 to 4 of pi times the square root of x squared. And of course, that's just 1 to 4, integral of 1 to 4, pi x dx. So now we can just compute this rather quick definite integral. Uh, we find an antiderivative of pi x, which will be pi x squared over 2. And we want to evaluate this from 1 to 4. Uh, when x is 4, we get 16 pi over 2, uh, which will be 8 pi. And we subtract from that 1 pi over 2, or pi over 2. And so we get 16 pi over 2 minus pi over 2, and we get an exact volume of 15 pi over 2. And so this will be the volume of the solid obtained by rotating this particular region around the x-axis. If you'd like to try a similar problem, you can pause the video and find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region between y equals square root of 4 minus x and y equals 0, along the intervals 0 to 4 around the x-axis. For your convenience, the region and the rotated solid are shown here below. You can resume the video in a few seconds to see a worked out solution. Since the region borders the x-axis, which is our axis of rotation here, we're going to have cross sections that are disks. And so we need to figure out the radius of the disk uh, found at each value x from 0 to 4. By looking at our region here, we see that the, cro the cross-sectional disk is formed by a segment from the x-axis up to the curve y equals square root of 4 minus x. And therefore, the radius of our particular disk at x will be the square root of 4 minus x. Once we know this radius, we can use the area of our disk and our volume formula to compute the volume. Our volume is therefore the integral from 0 to 4 of pi times the square root of 4 minus x quantity squared. 
The squaring the square root leaves just 4 minus x as our integrand, of course, multiplied by the constant of pi. Uh, the antiderivative of that is pi times the quantity 4x minus x squared over 2, and we'd like to evaluate that from 0 to 4, and this gives us pi times 16 minus 8, or simply 8 pi. And so the volume, uh, the volume of our solid is going to be exactly 8 pi.